And for the headlines, weather forecast. Habaga to bring rain showers to Western Visayas and parts of Southern Luzon, according to Pagasa. In local news, 18-year-old and two minors arrested for shooting in CDO. 15-year-old wanted by PNP, three accomplices, arrested for shooting a young man. Son of ex-police officer shot dead, companion wounded. Cagayan de Oro prepares for Mayor Uy Second Soka. National News DOH report on Pentagon's secret anti-vax campaign targeting PH deserves investigation. Fire displaces 12 families in Paranaque City. International News Cargo ships struck by Hothi rebels has been abandoned, says US. Entertainment Ria Ataide announces she is pregnant. From star to father of child stars, Bobot Mortiz reflects on his career. Sports Celtics focus on regrouping as Mavs avoid NBA final sweep. Casey Condeno, a Rota Smash Scholar athlete, aims to motivate aspiring badminton players. International Feature The secret high-tech art laboratory concealed beneath Paris. National Feature Miss World Philippines 2024 introduces 35 official candidates. Trivia Do chickens fly? Yes, but not in the same way as other birds. Good morning, Philippines. Maganda umaga, Luzon. Ug may ada bisaya sa Mindanao. Today is Monday, June 17, 2024. I am Athalia Pisanya. Weather forecast: Habaga to bring rain showers to western Visayas and parts of southern Luzon, according to Pagasa. According to Pag-asa, southwest monsoon or habagat will bring scattered rain showers over parts of southern Luzon and western Visayas on Sunday. In its latest weather bulletin, the agency forecasts partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers or thunderstorms in Batangas, Mimaropa, and western Visayas due to the southwest monsoon, potentially causing flash floods and landslides. Meanwhile, Metro Manila and other areas may expect similar weather conditions due to localized thunderstorms also posing risks of flash floods or landslides. Additionally, Pag-asa reports that some areas will experience a danger level heat index on Sunday, reaching temperatures from 42 degrees Celsius to 46 degrees Celsius, warning of heat-related illnesses and advising precautions to mitigate health risks under such extreme heat conditions. Local News 18-year-old and two minors arrested for shooting in CDO Two minors and an 18-year-old suspect in the shooting incident in Zone 5 Acacia, Barangay Carmen in the city are now detained at the Maharlika Detention Facility. Following a manhunt operation, aliases Budots, 14 years old, Jimbo, 16 years old, and Chopper, 18 years old, were apprehended. According to reports, Chopper is believed to be the owner of the firearm used in the shooting of the suspect known as alias Alenor, who remains sought after by the police since the incident on Friday. All those arrested deny involvement in the shooting incident that injured a male victim. The 18-year-old alias Chopper may potentially face charges of frustrated murder. 15-year-old wanted by PNP, three accomplices arrested for shooting a young man. 
Intelligence operatives of the police are now searching for the 15-year-old suspect accused of shooting a bystander with a .38 caliber firearm in Acacia Extension, Barangay Carmen in the city. The incident unfolded swiftly after troops from Carmen Police Station, led by Major Mario Mantala Jr., responded to the scene. However, three accomplices of the suspect were apprehended, including those involved in the shooting of the 18-year-old victim. Initial investigations indicate a confrontation between the group of suspects and the victim, but it was unexpected that there was a loaded firearm present at the time of the incident. Fortunately, the victim's condition is not critical due to the gunshot wound but seeks justice for the attack in the area. Son of ex-police officer shot dead, companion wounded. Police operatives from Kogon Police Station are still searching for the individuals responsible for fatally shooting a former suspect facing charges under the Dangerous Drugs Act of 2002 who was a motorcycle driver on Ilang Ilang Street, Adela Subdivision, Barangay Kamamanan in the city last night. The victim, identified as Junjun Rodriguez, 29 years old and a resident of the area, was initially targeted by the police. According to the investigation, an armed man quickly entered the house and immediately shot and killed the victim, with his companion also injured in the foot. Police have not yet released further information on the motive behind the victim's targeted assault. The victim is reportedly the son of a former police officer and was temporarily released from city jail last year to assist his father. Cagayan de Oro prepares for Mayor Uy Second Soka. Cagayan de Oro City is gearing up for Mayor Rolando Clarex's Uy Second State of the City Address of the Year coinciding with the city's 74th charter anniversary. The address will be delivered at the Aquilino Nene Pimentel Jr. International Convention Center in Sitio Taguanao, Barangay in the Hag. According to spokesperson John Boy Aktub, the speech is expected to highlight the administration's accomplishments and remind department heads of previous directives. The event will be attended by City Hall employees, administration supporters, and other prominent guests with strict security measures in place. So we interviewed people in the streets and we asked them about what's their opinion about the early pregnancy and early marriage. So let's watch this. Okay, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Andito po tayo ngayon sa may public market ng Carmen kung saan nakikita niyo po sa aming palibot Meron pong mga vendors dito at mm, maghahanap po kami ng mga taong pwede naming makakausap uh, tungkol, patungkol po sa isyu ngayon ng early marriage or tsaka early pregnancy. Hello ma'am, good afternoon. Uh, pangalan po natin ma'am? Helen. Ma'am Helen? Oo. Oh. Kaya ito po si ma'am Helen. Uh, ilang taon na po kayo nagtitinda ng mga gulay? Dalawang taon po. Uh, Two years na po siya nagtitinda ng gulay dito sa may public market. Ang tanong ko po sa inyo ma'am is hindi po yung pag, pag, tit, pagbibenta nyo ng mga gulay kundi po yung, yung ano pong masasabi nyo ngayon sa mga kabataan na maagang nag-asawa. Hindi, hindi talaga maganda yung maagang mag-asawa kasi ano, mahirap yung sitwasyon ngayon. Kaya pinalala ko lang yung mga kabataan ngayon. Dapat mag-aral muna para may kinabukasan sila. Bali ikaw ma'am, yung may dalaga ka na ba po bang anak? Mayroon po. Sa, kasi ka, ka, karamihan sa ngayon yung mga kabataan po mapupusok. Hindi nyo, hindi nyo po mapipigilan kung ano po yung mga ginagawa niya. Sa yung palagay po ma'am, papayag po ba kayo pag yung sa anak nyo imangyayari po bigla? Hindi po. Pero kung halimbawa, ma'am, kung nandyan na yan, tatanggapin mo ba o hindi? Matatanggap po kasi nandyan na yan. Pero yung pinaka-advice mo po, ma'am? Sa anak ko? O kahit sa mga kabataan ngayon? Advice ko lang sa mga kabataan ngayon, i mag aral muna bago mag, ano, sa pamilya. Kasi mahirap pa ngayon eh. 
mas lalo na ang ina ang bibilihin nag mahal na bali ma'am ikaw ilang taon ka nagkaroon ng asawa o ng pamilya 16 so 16 bata so halimbawa ma'am at, at your age ma'am paano kung yun nga yung anak mo gagaya din sa iyo ilang, ilang taon na yung anak mo ngayon 17 so 17 wala pa siyang pamilya wala pa Nagana. so at least mas maganda yun po opo Okay, salamat po, ma'am. Ano po yung pangalan mo? Helen. Ma'am Helen, taga dito lang po kayo sa Carmen? Barangay Tignapuluan. Ah, Barangay Tignapuluan. So, araw-araw po kayo nandito? Opo. Okay, sige ma'am. At yun po, maraming salamat po sa ating interview ngayon si ma'am Helen sa Barangay Tignapuluan. So, dapat ang sige atong may advice para sa mga kabataan, sir. Ano nga, dito sila mag, sige, lakaw-lakaw, daw, ibos na pa eskulahon, naroon din may ingani. Yeah. Ano sir, kung yung mga anak natin sir is naging ganun po sa ano, do, dahil po sa mga influensya ng ibang kabataan? Ah, dili na may tabo. Kay bunalan ako siyang silig. <laughs>
National News, DOH, Report on Pentagon's Secret Anti-Vax Campaign Targeting PH Deserves Investigation. The Department of Health stated on Sunday that the Reuters investigative report alleging a U.S. military secret campaign to determine China's Sinovac vaccination in countries, including the Philippines, should be thoroughly investigated. According to the report, amid the COVID crisis, the U.S. military in initiated a covert operation to discredit China's Sinovac vaccine as retribution for Beijing's accusations against Washington regarding the pandemic. One of its targets was the Filipino population. The DOH emphasized the importance of examining these findings and presenting them to the relevant authorities in the affected nations. Meanwhile, the agency referenced a study published in BMC Public Health which noted that Filipinos' vaccination decisions are influenced by factors such as age, education, health insurance, employer requirements, awareness of the disease, and confidence in vaccines. Sinovac was among the COVID-19 vaccines available in the Philippines during the peak of pandemic alongside Pfizer, AstraZeneca, Moderna, and others. Fire displaces 12 families in Paranaque City. A fire erupted in a residential area at the boundary of Barangay La Huerta and Barangay San Donicio in Parangyaki City on Sunday, prompting a second alarm response. According to Fire Inspector Mark Tutu, head of operations at the Parangyaki Bureau of Fire, the fire quickly spread due to the close proximity of houses, despite most being built from concrete materials. The blaze affected approximately six houses, displacing about 12 families. Fortunately, there were no reported injuries or fatalities. The fire was contained and fully extinguished by around 2.14 in the afternoon. Muhammad Andol, a leader among the affected residents, recounted the incident, mentioning that the fire started shortly before noon, leaving him unable to salvage any belongings. Tutu mentioned that the fire allegedly or originated on the second floor of one of the houses, with investigations ongoing to determine its cause. International News Cargo ship struck by Houthi rebels has been abandoned, says U.S. The crew of a large cargo ship damaged in a missile strike by Yemen's Houthi rebels in the Gulf of Aden has abandoned the vessel, according to a statement from the U.S. military on Saturday. The Houthis have been conducting attacks on ships in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden since November 2023, which they say are in solidarity with Palestinians amid the Israel-Hamas conflict in Gaza. The crew of the MV Mer Verbena, a Palau flagged ship owner owned by Ukraine and operated by Poland, issued a distress call after being unable to control fires ignited by the attack using two cruise missiles from the Iran backed rebels on Thursday, reported US Central Command. Another cargo ship rescued the crew, Santom said. The Iranian frigate. Irene Hamaran was 8 nautical miles away from the MV Verbena and did not respond to the distress call, St. Tom added. One sailor was severely injured in the missile strike and was evacuated by U.S. forces. Another cargo ship, the MV Tutor, was abandoned after being hit by a sea drone near the Hothi-held city of Hodeida on Wednesday causing significant flooding according to the United Kingdom Maritime Trade Operations managed by the British Navy. The vessel is now drifting in the Red Sea. The Houthis took over Yemen's capital, Sana'a, in 2014 prompting a Saudi-led military intervention in support of the government of the following year. Yemen's conflict has resulted in hundreds of thousands of deaths, primarily due to fighting, disease, or food shortages, 
with much of the population reliant on humanitarian assistance. Entertainment Ria Taide announces that she is pregnant. Ria Taide announced on Sunday that she and her husband Zanjo Marudo are expecting their first child, confirming recent speculations about her pregnancy. The actress shared the news via an Instagram post on Father's Day, featuring a photo of the couple on a beach with a tide displaying her baby bump. In her caption, she expressed love for Marudo and excitement for the new chapter ahead. A tide known for her roles in Kapamilya dramas like Nagaapoy na Damdamin and Viral Scandal, tied the knot with Marudo in a civil ceremony last March. From star to father of child stars, Bobot Mortiz reflects on his career. Before becoming a prolific director known for launching the careers of many of today's top stars, Edgar Bobo Mortiz himself started out as a young celebrity. Reflecting on his journey in the entertainment industry in a recent video on Bernadette Sembrano's YouTube channel, Mortiz discussed his beginnings after winning the singing competition, Tawag ng Tanghalan. He later appeared in the variety show Oras ng Ligaya. Initially paired with Nora Honor before partnering with Vilma Santos. Mortiz eventually shifted to directing, notably steering the children's comedy show Go and Believe It, which introduced talents like Catherine Bernardo, Julia Montes, and others. Expressing satisfaction in nurturing new talent, Mortiz looks forward to the return of Go and Believe It, set to premiere on June 17. Celtics focus on regrouping as Mavs avoid NBA Finals sweep. Despite suffering their worst Finals defeat in franchise history with a 122-84 loss to the Mavericks in Game 4, the Boston Celtics remain confident with a 3-1 series lead. Jalen Brown emphasized the importance of learning from the setback and staying composed. He stressed that teams need to regroup and approach the challenge ahead with determination. Jason Tatum echoed this sentiment, focusing on moving forward and improving rather than dwelling on the significant loss. The Celtics, aiming for their 18th NBA crown in Game 5, acknowledged the tough road ahead but remained optimistic about their position in the series. Despite the Mavericks' commanding performance led by Luka Doncic, and Kyrie Irving. Casey Condeno, a Rota Smash scholar athlete, aims to motivate aspiring badminton players. Rota Smash, an initiative by the Rotary Club of New Manila South aimed at fundraising and fostering fellowship, has selected two champions of change student athletes who will receive support as they pursue their dreams. Among them is Casey Lay Condeno, a 16-year-old senior high student from Bulacan aspiring to make a mark in local badminton. Condeno, who participated in the first Rota Smash badminton tournament in Cubao, shared her unconventional entry into the sport due to health re reasons. Despite initial challenges, she has been playing for over eight years and credits her coach Angelino Bernardino and school involvement for her development. Financial difficulties prompted her to seek opportunities like Rota Smash, aiming to secure a scholarship. Casey hopes to play at the collegiate level and dreams of joining universities like UP or UST for psychology. Aiming to inspire others with her journey and gratitude to her supporters. International Feature The Secret High-Tech Art Laboratory Concealed Beneath Paris Hidden beneath the lore in Paris, resembling a Bond villain, villain's lair, is one of the world's most advanced art laboratories. The Center of Research and Restoration of Museums of France spans three floors and nearly 6,000 square meters 
equipped with its own particle accelerator named AGLAE. The center houses a diverse team of radiologists, chemists, geologists, metallurgists, archaeologists, and engineers. Annually, they scrutinize about 1,000 artworks, meticulously de determining their composition, origin, age, and condition changes over time. Their findings guide restoration efforts not only at the lover and Versailles, but also across various museums. Among the notable pieces analyzed are the Mona Lisa, Notre Dame, Cathedral Stained Glass Windows, and Napoleon Sabre. National Feature Miss World Philippines 2024 introduces 35 official candidates. The Miss World Philippines organization officially launched the Miss World Philippines 2024 competition with a press presentation of its candidates at Seda Manila Bay, Paranaque City. A total of 35 contestants are vying for the crowd, including 17 regional representatives and 18 finalists who passed the May 28th screening. National Director Arnold Vega Fria highlighted the inclusivity of this year's pageant, featuring candidates from major cities across Luzon to Mindanao. The winner will succeed Miss World Philippines Gwendoline for Noel, crowned in 2022. The competition includes preliminary challenges such as the top model, sports, and head-to-head -head challenges. The coronation night is scheduled for July 19 at the Mall of Asia Arena in Pasay City, where winners will be crowned for Miss World Philippines, Reina Hispanoamericana Filipinas, and Miss Philippines Tourism. <music> Trivia Do chickens fly? Yes, but not in the same way as the other birds. Yes, chickens can indeed fly, although their flight capabilities are distinct from those of songbirds or raptors. Unlike birds that rely on flight for hunting or nesting, chickens are ground nesters and foragers, which has shaped their ability to survive without strong flying skills. Their wings are designed for short bursts, of speed rather than sustained flight, with muscles not developed for long flights. Factors such as breed and age influence a chicken's flying ability. Young, lighter chickens can fly better than heavier adults. While they typically fly vertically to roost, lighter breeds can achieve remarkable flight heights and speeds, with a world record for flight distance by chicken scenting at 301.5 feet. Flight for chickens serves practical purposes such as safety from predators, fleeing threats, or reaching elevated roosting spots. And that was the information we got from here and abroad. Keep listening and watching. Please subscribe, follow, like, and share Pinoy Rob on YouTube channel. And thank you very much for watching Pinoy Rob News Channel, Kagayan de Oro. I ask once more to support and subscribe and turn on notification for more updates and more info. Again, thank you very much and have a wonderful day.